What the f Guys, the stuff that we do out here, it's not just relevant in a parking lot. It's important that you know that. Let's talk about that further. Intro. All right, cut that intro because I got to get this out to you guys. It's so important that you know that what we do out here on this parking lot, anytime you're out there practicing slow speed maneuvers, this stuff is not just relevant to when you're out in a parking lot. I hear so many people saying, oh, I don't need to know how to do that. You know, if I get nervous, I'll just walk my motorcycle. Duck walking your motorcycle, um, it's not just not cool, right? It's not safe, right? It's also showing that you don't know what to do when you slow down. Most motorcycle accidents happen at slow speeds. So I want you to think about these numbers. 98% of the motorcycle riding population do not know how to actually ride their motorcycle. Meaning, when they slow down, they have no clue what to do. That's why you see their feet come out. They have no clue what to do. They don't know how to control a motorcycle at slow speeds. So, if we know 98% of people don't know how to ride at slow speeds, it just makes sense that most motorcycle accidents happen at slow speeds, right? That's simple arithmetic because when you slow down, if you don't know what you're doing, and it's an uh-oh moment, you're gonna squeeze and hope for the best. You're gonna follow your instincts, which are always wrong on a motorcycle, all right? Let me not say always. Usually wrong on a motorcycle. Sometimes it'll work out, right? But just because something works out doesn't mean you did it the right way, right? It's important that you know that. If you're new to this channel, I'm sorry, I'm Robert. This is Be The Bossy Your Motorcycle. And it's important that you know that on this channel, in Preloader Nation. There's no negativity here, zero negativity. There's no judgment, there's no name calling, there's no teasing, there's no arrogance. It's an each one teach one environment. And I don't care how long you've been riding a motorcycle, I don't care how many miles you have on your, under your belt or how much seat time you have. None of that means anything if you don't know how to ride the motorcycle at slow speeds. Anybody can get on their motorcycle and ride at speed, anybody, because the motorcycle is doing the work. But it's important that you know how to operate this machine. And the reason I'm telling you there's no negativity here is I don't want anyone to be discouraged or embarrassed that they've been riding their motorcycle for five decades and still can't make a U-turn. I don't care when you decide to start, but you need to start. You need to practice. We are so upside down as it pertains to people out there that actually know how to ride. So if you ride in motorcycle or rallies or you go to, you're in a club or you go any place, group rides, Anything you do like that, I'm letting you know. Look to your left, look to your right, look in front of you, look behind you, look all around you. The odds are very high that all of those people are out there just trying to, just, just hoping for the best, right? They don't have any training under their belt. And if they do, they don't have enough practice to have the muscle memory so that if something goes wrong, they know what to do. I'm gonna show you guys this video and I'm not pointing this out to make fun of anybody because I just told you, that's not what we do here. But we have to learn from other people's mistakes, right? And in this video, this is a group ride. And let me just show it to you. So I took a, I took a few things away from this. So remember this, guys. This is true with anything in life. But we're going to talk about motorcycles. Everything you learn becomes another tool in your toolbox, right? And if you don't practice on your motorcycle at all, right, you just ride, your toolbox is very minimal, very minimal. Whether you, whether you notice or not, it is. And what lets us know how minimal our toolbox is, is when the unexpected happens. 
because that's when all that practice pays off. So why I say what we do out here is not just relevant out here, it's because what you do out here, you carry it with you out there and you continue to think about it and do it. That's why I say you don't need cones to practice. So if you're always practicing, coming to a smooth stop out here, guess what you're gonna do when you're out there riding or what you should be doing? You should also be practicing coming to a smooth stop, right? If you're practicing U-turns out here, when you go out there, you're always practicing your U-turns, emergency braking. If you come out here and practice that, which you absolutely should, you should be practicing it out there too. It doesn't have to be extreme, but the point is the time to do it is not when you need it and you don't have any practice under your belt, right? Especially if you don't have ABS on your, on your motorcycle, so you're, you, you're just gonna panic and squeeze, you're gonna lock up that front wheel. And that's what happened in this video. That guy, I don't know why, he had this burst of speed, the motorcycle is on the right, squeezed that front brake, motorcycle went down, but you would think that that's what I wanted you to pay attention to. No, I want you to watch that because it's obvious he fell. We know that. But do you know why he fell? I just told you. He grabbed the front brake. I don't know what happened there. What I want you to look at is the guy that was next to him. That guy is not expecting him to fall. So when he falls and he almost is in this motorcycle rider's path, that's an uh-oh moment. So what did that guy do? He squeezed his front brake and you'll see his right foot come down. So automatically he's doing what you shouldn't do. If he's going at a certain speed, it's okay for him to grab that front brake, but his foot should be on the rear brake too because now he's gonna have to swerve to get around this guy, right? A lot easier to do that without being on the front brake, right? Swerve. Then when he goes around him, you see that his bike, he's still got his front feet out, he's on the front brake, and then he almost drops his bike. So the point I'm trying to make, guys, is that's an uh-oh moment, and it shows you that if the person that's riding next to you, even if you got it figured out, if they don't, then you could be a victim based on their lack of skill. So guys, I, I, it's so important. This is a short video. I said I was going to do this, and I have to get this out there to you. Please stop taking for granted how dangerous these things are. We already know these things are dangerous, right? We know every time you throw a leg over this, you're taking a chance. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. We know that. With that being said, the less you practice and build muscle memory on this, you are increasing the odds that something bad can happen to you, right? Something bad can always happen to us, but we're always dealing with the odds. And the less you know, the more chances are that when something happens, you're not gonna come out on the other side of that favorably, all right? People can listen to this until their ears bleed, and they go, ah, you know, I'm fine, you know, I'm good, I'm good. You always hear, I'm good, I'm good. But then you're gonna have those people that either had a close call or actually had an accident and maybe a bad accident and maybe the, the worst kind which a fatality is involved. And then that's gonna be the thing that makes them say, you know what, um, maybe I need to practice. But then there's the other coin of somebody that didn't practice, had a bad accident, and now their, their philosophy is, I'm not riding anymore because these things are dangerous. When they really don't understand it was dangerous to begin with because they didn't choose to prioritize actually understanding and practicing how to ride the motorcycle. And again, I'm not just talking about touring type motorcycles like this. I'm not just talking about heavy motorcycles. The rules don't change no matter what kind of motorcycle you're riding as far as the techniques. But the heavier motorcycles are more intimidating to people and that intimidation comes from lack of confidence and you're not gonna get confidence without practice. All right, guys, I, I know it feels like I'm beating a dead horse saying the same things over and over, but if something's important, it's worth repeating, right? Repetition equals retention. We are well, well behind the curve in the motorcycle riding community as far as who actually knows how to ride their motorcycle and who doesn't. This is not about being cool, forget about that, right? Forget about it, right? But if being cool is what you wanna do because of this, then do it. I don't care what the reason is, but I'm trying to motivate you to understand you need to practice on these things. Now, what you just saw me doing, no, you don't need to practice that. That's extreme, right? I just had a private lesson out here today, and the guy was telling me I want to be able to make 18-foot U-turns. My response to him was, that's great, but not necessary. Let's work on the 27-foot box first, and then within that box, he's well within 27 feet. That's great. That's all you're really going to need to know. Let's do right turns and left turns from a stop, straight up. Let's learn how to do that. Let's start and let's stop, nice and smooth and in control, right? These are, that's bread and butter to everything else. So just practice the things that you don't even have to lean, right? People say, oh, my fear is not getting hurt. I'm worried about 
damaging my 25, 35, $45,000 motorcycle? My answer is always going to be the same to that. Oh, I almost, you almost made me cuss, guys, because I'm in my feelings right now. I'm not going to say forget about this motorcycle, but realize, I want you to realize this. The only reason you're so concerned about the motorcycle is because your confidence is low, right? If you've been practicing and your confidence is at a certain level, you're not going to be thinking about the motorcycle at slow speeds out here practicing. Because again, you don't have to do anything extreme like this. Just practice a U-turn, a left turn, and a right turn. So please, don't use the motorcycle as an excuse not to practice. I mean, if you really think about this logically, it doesn't make sense. So don't think just because, hey, I haven't crashed yet, I haven't dropped my motorcycle yet, that I'm, I'm good, I'm set. No, you're not. The situation just hasn't come up yet where these skills are gonna come in. And also, remember, we practice because we wanna increase our options out there, right? And when uh-oh happens, if you don't have anything in your tool, your tool chest, your options are minimal. So when you squeeze and hope for the best, right? But sometimes it's not even just that. Sometimes it's simple things. And everybody thinks about this, the gas station. I get to a pump, it doesn't work. I would love to be able to just make a U-turn. And a U-turn in the gas station is not an extreme U-turn, right? In fact, I would prefer that you do it straight up. You know, sometimes there's oil slicks and stuff in the gas station. That's not the place where you want to be leaning unnecessarily, right? Or anything where if you had the tools, your brain would say, I'm just going to do this. And if you don't have the tools, that's not even a thought process in your brain. It's not even an option. It's not an option because you don't have any confidence in that area. So you just know, let me just take the long way around. All right. It's about convenience. It's about looking cool. But more importantly, it's about safety, guys. Safety. All right. All right. Let me get off my soapbox now, guys. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say about it for now. I'm not saying I'm not going to repeat this again. And listen, guys, we're not trying to change everybody's mind because we Listen, with human nature, there's people out there that are stubborn. No matter what you say, no matter how much sense it makes, what you're saying, doesn't matter. They're going to do it their way. They're fine. And I pray for those people, of course. But I want them to know at whenever they want to come around, whenever they want to come around, you're welcome into Preloader Nation if you want to actually learn how to ride your motorcycle in a positive learning environment. All right, guys? If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Like the video. Share. Hit that notification bell so you can be notified whenever I come out with a new video. All right, guys, I said it before, I'll say it again. Seat time doesn't equal practice time, guys. And if you have time to ride your motorcycle, you better make time to practice on it. Practice! Till next time.